Hey, welcome to another episode of Fans of Motion, the ultimate Night Ranger and rock podcast. Welcome to part two of our interview with Ross Valerie. On this episode, we really dig into his new record, All of the Above. Um, you know, we talk about everything about the record. We talk about the artwork, how eclectic these um, these songs are on the record. We go track by track. We talk about the origins of these songs, the performers on the track. It's a really great episode. Um, of course, as in part one, Eric Levy of Night Ranger, who's played in keyboards on this record, uh, joins us as well as long uh, along with Jacob Stowe, who is the you know, studio producer engineer, jack of all trades there at the Sandbox. So um, without any further ado, here you go. Part two of Ross Valerie. So why did it take so long? Why now, finally, all of the above? Well, the music had to develop and complete itself, but the technology here and the techniques here had to come up to speed. So it's uh, several factors that had to lead to completion for this album to come out as it has uh, for the first time in my career. So you re let's let's... Let's dig into the uh, the album. The album again released uh, April this year, two thousand twenty-four. Um, all of the above. <laughs> oh, uh, hey, goodies. Whoa. Let's let's talk. I want. I you know I love. I've always loved vinyl, even back in the nineties. I loved it back in the nineties because I could get all my vinyl records for like two bucks. Now that's not the case. But um, <laughs> uh, let's talk about the artwork a little bit. Uh, you know what do we got? Uh, I mean, we got the vinyl record in the uh, background, but uh, uh, you know what's the uh, describe the artwork and the meaning to the record? Well, I'll begin by describing the artist, Furry Prince, uh, original member of Journey, mm -hmm. and of uh, course a continuing member of the Tubes. Yep, and more importantly, a well-known and respected artist on top of all of that and i have the privilege of i've had the privilege of working with them and developing all of the artwork uh, not only for the album but the title pages for the music videos which i'm sure we could talk about eventually but uh prairie and i go a long way back and he's local to the bay area when he's not busy out there with todd rundgren in the tubes and I had this concept for all of the above, which he immediately took to, and we developed the artwork you're seeing, which is uh, represents, um, to me, all of the above represents visually their different instruments I'm recording with for the yep. first time. To me, it's not a feature, but it is, uh, it, it's a reality. I'm recording keyboards and guitars on various songs and, fretless for the first time being recorded. So that's one meaning of all of the above. Um, another meaning represented in the artwork, if you look a little closer or think of it differently, is the variety of music. Very eclectic, a very broad spectrum of styles, be they current or past. And uh, I another meaning would be uh, the long list of various musicians who played because of their talent and their ability on particular songs that suited their talent. So that's the meaning of the artwork. Um, Prairie found a, a photograph of a Buddhist bronze statue to modify. And we chose some, um, in the artwork, we chose something similar to Sanskrit with Prairie's adaption adapting the font from Sanskrit to uh, something fairly legible, 
psychedelic poster art kind of approach. So that's definitely a throwback. Um, you know, and, and now uh, you have this record finally coming out. Comes out in April. Um, mostly instrumental. You do have a cover. Uh, you know, uh, a cover on there. Um, but uh, it's you know when when you you when you get this record, and you know, I think you know, talking to some people, um. You, some people think there's such a maybe it's a, a drastic not a drastic but you know it's different than journey and where i kind of come back and say well you know if you listen to those first three records you know it's not that different um if uh um you know you could easily take uh what's the record that was released in japan the uh, uh dream dream on um dream after dream right uh, I, I see i see your point here josh uh the similarity of eclectic music and all of the above as it relates to early journey experimental music once again early journey correct yeah music, that's what we were that's what we love to play that's what we recorded that's what we released there were there were no restrictions there were some songs, obviously, vo the vocal songs that were far more attractive to a broader audience, but this is who we, that's who we were at that time. And that represents, uh, I think, closely the kind of music I uh, am attracted to writing. I was composing more for those beginning albums uh, and, and was uh, involved with composing for that Japanese soundtrack release called Dream After Dream. Yeah, so there's a different, definite correlation between the music I'm doing now, Early Journey, and the Journey soundtrack. That was a great project. That was so much freedom for everybody at the time to, to do that soundtrack because it was off the beaten path. Hey, this is for a movie. We can create moods. We can use other influences and other styles that don't necessarily relate to our uh, main uh, mm -hmm musical theme as a band that was that was a, a great experience yeah, and for those that don't know there's a, a journey record recorded only in japan i think 1980 um dream after dream um like i said it's a movie soundtrack so if you're not familiar with it um go track it down like uh like i said it's it was a, a japanese uh release only um and you know the first track off of um, all the above, Wild Kingdom, to me, festival dance from Dream After Dream could immediately follow that track. Wow, uh, you know what I, I mean? Like thought of that, but you know, yeah, um, you know, like I imagine, like, and that's what's great about this record. I mean, you got to listen to it twice. You, it's a record. Um, you know, all the above is a record that you can have in the car driving. You know, we had, I had it on over the weekend when we had a cookout just you know music in the background um you know if you self-medicate i definitely you know take that and listen to it you'll get a whole new experience you now you're talking <laughs> but Jeez. you know it's like uh like i kind of described you know like i said it's it's not that they're very similar but wild kingdom um is a song where you can see yourself out in the bush and rhinos and elephants and you got your safari hat on and festival dance could be that evening after the the hunt or whatever and you're you're back in the village and you're with the fire and you're you know it's the relaxing time in the evening but um I, oh i just thought there was such a correlation between you know some of that journey stuff that maybe people don't wouldn't think that's there but let's talk about wild kingdom wild kingdom is that one of the oldest tracks that you worked on on the record wild kingdom i began writing on a synthesizer uh with a, a calliope patch uh in the mid 80s and it has been somewhat of a complete piece because i could play it all in various arrangements all on the keyboard with minimal instruments so for me that was a fairly easy composition to develop 
as I began with Eric in 2012. So that's a song, uh, uh, along with others, that I would jam over the years with people. Somewhere in uh, Steve Smith's uh, Real to Real 24 track storage is a take we did just for the fun of it, because I was over at his house rehearsing for another album project for Neil Zazan. Wild Kingdom with Steve Smith is somewhere in storage, but uh, I had the benefit with that song of, of bringing in for the first time Carl Parazzo, the master percussionist with Carlos Santana. And uh, Carl appears on many of the songs on the album and is uh, practically as vital to the meat of the music as, as Eric is. Uh, Carl brought in uh, Walfredo Reyes to perform the drums on Wild Kingdom. And there we go. And they laid down what Carl considers some fairly traditional Latin rhythms. Even though Wild Kingdom is not as a complete piece uh, traditionally Latin, it's my impression based on uh, the rhythms of, that they laid down. So a, a beautiful experience. You know, now, is, is that a pan flute I hear in there? So, you know, what's, you know, I'm, I'm and I, I I don't know all my instruments, but. I wish uh, I could remember. I, that was some sampled flute. That was a long time ago. <laughs> it might have but, been a flute or an ocarina or something like, like that. Ocarina or pan flute. You know, it was synthesized. But the way Eric plays as a flutist can be deceiving. And there are other sounds he uses on other songs in which people wonder whether that's a synthesizer or not well mm -hmm. asking that question is flattering i think yeah one thing i like about these tracks is i mean obviously most of them are bass led i mean uh you know obviously you know it's ross's album and ross is a bass player but uh um i like that uniqueness uh is uh is tom land like is that a fretless bass is that two bases going like ah, you know well, i'm trying to take it in and again i you know i'm right. i'm not a, a an acute musician so i don't know exactly what all i'm hearing i just know i like it um but uh talk about a little bit of what you're playing on that ross yeah well first of all the uh, uh, uh mentioning uh how songs are bass led just some of the songs are bass led and Tom Land is definitely one of those. But my approach to the music is, and this album and what I'm even doing now is not necessarily as a featured player featuring the bass and it's, that's the meat of the music. No, it's for me, it's about the composition and what any of the instruments, including the bass may play a part in, okay? but. Referring to Tom Land, it's uh, just one standard four string bass. One instrument recorded, just one instrument through the whole song. Um, but there are two and three note chords that I'm playing. And the, uh, the sound effects include pretty much a harmonizer or chorus for that, and maybe some reverb. Not on Tom Land. Not on Tom Land. It's it's pretty much straight up a chorus effect, maybe even two interwoven chorus effects, but it's one instrument recorded all the way through. And like uh, Wild Kingdom on the keyboards, Tom Land has its origins in the early 70s and is, is uh, and has been a standalone bass piece, it, or it could be a bass solo. And I just took this complete idea as it was pretty much complete in the mid 80s and simply orchestrated it with Perry Prince on drums, Miles mm -hmm. Shaw on guitar, okay. and of course, Eric Levy tickling the ivories. Um, a track <laughs> I want to get on with, uh, with on this record that I probably my personal favorite is Nightflower. Um, and uh, I wish you would have made it longer. It's only three and a half minutes. Like I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it, and it's like, you know, I'm like, where's the eight minute version? Uh, 
but you Man. got the sax oh. you got a haunting piano by eric levy maybe i don't know eric talk to yes. me a little bit about that uh about night flyer like i said that's my personal favorite from the record oh me talk about it you it's not <laughs> <laughs> night flower actually i got to play a real piano on night flower grand piano the, yes the steinway over at 25th street it's a lot of these uh songs are uh shout out to vi labs i I love that dude's pianos they're they're great but but uh, just, we just happened to be in 25th street um reamping uh different instruments and i think we were oh um we were we were cutting real piano on and uh organ on uh tom land yeah and it it was kind of i don't even remember like being prepared to play night flower that day it just kind of came up like oh let's do night flower on real piano yeah the mics are up yeah mics are up right the mics are up and uh yeah what that's an amazing instrument over there that piano it's beautiful jacob you know so you know is there ever tracks that you know was there a certain track that ever gave you trouble like getting you know the sound that they wanted or you know getting what you wanted out of it you know was there was there anything it just was like you know it seems like no matter what you do no matter if it's music or you know a job there's just always that one thing it's like just always keeps popping up or you can't uh you know it always gives you trouble was there something within these songs was there a song that you know just gave you issues or anything that you know you constantly had to work on to try to fix um there's plenty of those little things, you know, <laughs> you, and, and you develop the thing, the work, workarounds and all that, but the little bell bar that Carl's got that really like high pitched loud ping sound that comes around sometimes it's like, a, it's super high frequency. That one has always been, it's always a, a fun challenge to make that one uh, kind of settle in and fit in a way that doesn't like hurt. Um, I think it happened to us a couple times on the record with that one. But that's always just, you know, it's it's just a fun one. Other than that, there was a few ones with, uh, you know, takes that we really needed that were maybe a little buzzy or anything like that. You know, those are those are no big deal. Um, but no, <laughs> I think the biggest challenge and what has been accomplished by Jacob in this is that I was mentioning earlier um, um approaching audiophile quality but what i didn't mention is it, it, some of these songs are obviously intricate there's a lot going on in there mm -hmm. on some of these songs and sorting out all those parts and all those instruments that we collectively or at least i feel are important and finding their place in the mix in the image and Getting all those little subtle sounds and, and parts in there is uh, quite an accomplishment. Yeah, I will actually, I'll expand on that slightly. Please do. It, it, it has, it, as we progress through the, the, the tunes, things got increasingly more complicated, I think, <laughs> with just the way that we approached. Like we, we had finished, I was going to say this during the discussion about Wild Kingdom, but we had finished Wild Kingdom technically. Like it, Ross had basically said, okay, this one's done. And <laughs> I don't, I, I think it was after we went, we went to 25th street to do a bunch of basically group mixing was the, the initial idea. And it turned out to be a whole bunch of post-production. Some people cut new parts. It, it turned out to be a really gr good thing for the music. And when we got back, we were listening to wild kingdom and I don't remember who said it, but we started cutting more keyboards and we ended up cutting, I don't remember how many layers either. It was probably four to five, maybe six new layers of keyboards in, on in, Wild Kingdom. Oh, oh well, that's drum. right. I Actually, I played some more keyboards too. Yeah, so it was not done. And we'll do, it was not. a lot of times with keyboard passes, keyboard tracking, there'll be, you know, maybe four or five different sounds. And he'll do anywhere from five to ten, sometimes beyond takes of each sound. And... Then we go through each of those sounds, section by section, take by take, and piece together what we call the best of. For for everything that we do, we pretty much work this way. We'll, we will take 
at a minimum five takes, sometimes a, a lot more than that, whether it's a full band, whether it's a single person overdubbing. And then we sit there and we go through each section of every take and they have this intricate note system and we it's comping and we do that for hours and hours and hours. And, and it's worth it. And at this point, you know, we're, we're at, we're, we'll be working with one sound. It has, you know, five to six sources of that sound across 10 take it's a lot of i think that's the, probably what's always been the the largest piece of like the the work around here i think it ends up taking the most of our time like we can track real quickly and all of a sudden have 15 like we'll be like oh what if we did this what if we tried this sound on that and then eric will knock out 15 takes and then the, <laughs> then the next day we're like oh we've got like four hours of of comping to do because of that like you know loose cannon 30 minutes at the end of the day yeah, it, it, the, the feeling about it, and, and it's worth taking the time with compiling, grabbing different parts and different timelines, the, the best of, it, it's worth it. And we have a system that Jacob mentioned. It's it's a grid system or a note-taking system. It might border upon maybe the way that Steely Dan has done stuff. It's just the right part for the right moment. And we found that it's worth it. Of course, I have this obsessiveness. Have I forgotten anything? Is there like just a jewel of a piece of a part that we haven't heard? We, we listen to everything. But as we've been doing this for years, the process moves faster. Mm -hmm. And it and and uh, as Eric and I are sorting and n noting everything that's in front of us, Jacob is looking at it a, at a global level and oftentimes he'll make the choices that we didn't even bring up so yeah. there's an intuitiveness to this uh, and the process gets easier but our uh, our comping our compiling sessions are lengthy and the result is uh, what we hear especially in songs like wild kingdom and windmill uh yeah, yeah, yeah we've, we we've continued to record uh well before this album was completed and there's a whole slew of more material uh most it's, of it current creations and in some case we're visiting uh some cases we're visiting material that's been sitting unheard and uh uh people will think there's a really broad disparate set of mm -hmm. styles of music on all of the above well the horizon is actually larger than that. Okay. When, so mm -hmm. be unprepared for yet completely something completely different again. When uh, you guys I are talking about it happens, we're not sure because there's more music uh being released uh, from the album as singles and as music videos, which I'm very proud of. And you uh when I want I want to go back to that grid system you guys are talking about and like analyzing what the you know which which take to to put on and do you ever go through that whole process is there and the, you know hey we've spent five hours deciding looking at all the different takes and you're not happy with any of them you know do you ever get never. like that never there's you know we we know by having made whether it's five or 15 passes at a part, we know we've got it. Now we just sort out the best of from those numbers mm -hmm. takes, number of takes in a timeline, this part, and then that part from there, and then that part from there. And n n never do we walk away unsatisfied. Um, because I think a, a big thing that doesn't do music that's released today justice is most people listen to music through their phone, uh, through crappy earbuds, um, you know, this record among many others, you know, is definitely a record you want to listen to through a great sound system. Um, if you uh, can, if, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's one of these records where I think one of you talked about it is, you know, like, um, I'll be listening to it. I'll be listening to Ross's bass and then, all of a sudden it goes over here and I'm in this other world and listen to these instruments. And then it goes back and 
if you know so what i what i would suggest is if you're you know when you get this you know pull this record up take time listen to it through your best sound system i mean i love and turn the bass up just a little bit because i mean you can hear from the three of them how much effort they've put into picking what i want and what's the best to put it together and um and it's definitely an adventure. I enjoy listening to the record. Like I said, uh, you know, I like having it on just around the house. I like having it on like we have a cookout. And if I want to relax one evening and, you know, have a little drink, it does. It takes you on um, an adventure, Ross. Uh, so I appreciate um, all the to, effort. Uh... That's I appreciate good... all the effort you've gone into putting this record together with, you know, um, you know, Eric and Jacob and all the other players. Now, right now we can only stream this. Do you have any plans for physical media for the record? Uh, not as of yet, but we'll, we'll get around to that. And I, I think uh, how you've concluded the interview here very well is listen to the whole thing. Uh, turn off your phone, turn out the lights or close your eyes and listen to the whole thing on the best system. That's been my advice. You're, 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 you're on the right track there. Thanks so much for having us. All right, Jacob, Levy, Ross, it was uh, great having you guys. And uh, you're all more than welcome to jump back on anytime. Everybody out there, go stream uh, all the above uh, um, on all your favorite streaming uh, platforms and uh, give us any updates. If you guys are going to get the uh, stuff on physical media. You YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, find for, find please, Ross on YouTube. Please. Please subscribe to the music channel. videos. Yeah. YouTube and video. Do it on a good sound system. <laughs> yeah. So there you Thank go. You. Go find go find Ross on all the social medias and go follow his station on YouTube. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. Adios. Thank you. Later. There you go, guys. Part two of our interview with Ross Valerie, Eric Levy, and Jacob Stowe. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. It's a great journey on... See that journey? Yeah, look at that. Uh, but it's a great journey on just seeing how, you know, record is created from, you know, kind of start to finish. Um, so, yeah, so I'll put some links uh, in the comments um, below the post on Facebook, and I will put the uh, the a link in the YouTube post as well uh, for his YouTube channel. You want to go to uh, it's if you're on YouTube, it's Ross Valerie Base, um, and I'll put the link there. But if you're listening to it, just yeah, all you gotta do is just go to at Ross Valerie Base on YouTube, and you'll get his YouTube channel. Click subscribe there. Also, I'll put a link to uh, um, Spotify or Apple Tunes or whatever it is to uh, for the solo record, Ross's solo record, all of the above. Make sure you check both of those um, those links out. I'd like to thank uh, Ross, Eric, and Jacob for joining um, the Fans in Motion podcast, and uh, I'd like to thank you guys for listening. If you guys, if you're a first-time listener, the hub of Fans of Motion is on Facebook. I mean, we have almost 11,000 followers on the Fans of Motion Night Ranger tribute page. All you got to do is go to Facebook, go to the top, the search, just type in Night Ranger Fans of Motion, click join. I will accept you, and you will be then with 11,000 of your closest Night Ranger friends. You can also go to www.fansofmotion.com and uh, we got all the podcast episodes there. Uh, what else? We got Instagram, X, Threads. You can, um, obviously, if you're listening to us on YouTube, click subscribe. But we're on all the big podcatchers, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple, iTunes, and uh, Twitcher, and Thread, whatever. I don't know. There's all kinds of them. But we're everywhere, man. I mean, we're like the plague. So uh, 
you know, click like and subscribe and all that stuff. And again, I'd like to thank Ross for joining the podcast. All right, everybody. I'll see you next week. Later.